Securing a Bitcoin wallet using two-factor authentication. If we have e-wallets with a service, we want to do everything we can to protect the credentials and the private keys in those wallets. In this nugget, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Let's begin. I'd like you to visualize with me just for a moment that we have a Bitcoin e-wallet and there's 1,000 Bitcoin in it. And I want you also to imagine that one day we log in and we see the balance is zero. Oh, that would be very painful, especially if you hadn't authorized the transaction or the sending of that Bitcoin to some other address. Our objective in this nugget is to put a comfort level on doing what we can to help protect the security of our private keys with a wallet provider such as blockchain.info, and that is to use multi-factor authentication. Now, a great question would be, okay, what exactly is multi-factor authentication? Well, authenticating a user is traditionally done by something the user knows, like a password. So the user knows their password and their user account, and that's one factor for authenticating somebody. Now, we could ask them other things they know, too, before we give them access, but that is simply one factor, something that somebody knows. We also have a category or a factor, and that's something that somebody is. For example, maybe a fingerprint scan or a hand scan or a scan of their eye for certain patterns that are specific to that individual. That would be yet another factor. And another factor we could use is something the person has. So with multi-factor authentication, all we're doing is before we give access to a system or to an account, we want to pull from two of these categories, something the person knows and something that the person is or has. Now, it's not very realistic on the internet for common transactions to verify you know, biometrics like blood samples and eyeball scans and stuff like that. It's more likely we're going to have something the user knows like a password and something they have. Now, what can we give them that makes it super easy to do that? And the answer, one of the answers is Google Authenticator. Google Authenticator is going to generate a code that changes. It's going to be six digits long and that changes every 30 seconds. So if somebody wants to log into an account, let's say this is where they want to get into, they have to know their username or their ID, they have to know their password, and they look at their Google Authenticator and they have to put in that code, which is only valid for 30 seconds. So in the big picture, somebody to get into our account would have to know our ID, they'd have to know our password, and they would have to get their hand on our smartphone to get our Google Authenticator code that changes every 30 seconds. If they don't have all of those components, the attacker would not be able to log in as us. So let's take a look at what it feels like to log in to an e-wallet account using single factor authentication. We need to know what our identifier is and we would need to know our password. Assuming that's correct, we'll go ahead and click open wallet. And there's our beautiful Bitcoin wallet with zero Bitcoin in it at the moment. Now, to set up multi-factor authentication, it's so easy. Everybody should be doing something to this effect. And that is to go to account settings. And then in account settings, we'll go down to security. And we're going to say, I want to do two-factor authentication. One is already our user ID and password. That's already one factor. And for the second one, we can use a text message. We can have a key that we can purchase and put in a USB port. We can get an email notification that has extra codes that we have to put in, or we can use Google Authenticator. Now in Google Authenticator, which I downloaded to my little iPhone, I can now go ahead and just scan that. So I open up Google Authenticator. There's a little option that says scan barcode. So I'm gonna click on that, put it in my crosshairs, and now that's been added to Google Authenticator. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and log out. And now if I want to log back in, I have the same identifier, same password. But now I'm going to have to use the Google Authenticator code to go ahead and get in. So that code right now is 029411. I'll go ahead and click on Open Wallet. And as long as I did it within that 30-second window where that number didn't change, that will let me in. So now someone to get into this account, which has zero Bitcoin, by the way, they would have to know the ID or the alias, the password, and they would also have to have the Google Authenticator that's linked to this account. And by doing this, we've just significantly increased the security of somebody getting in and logging in as us to this e-wallet. In this micro nugget, we've identified what is multi-factor authentication. It's when we're making some individual or entity prove using two different factors, like something they know and something they have before giving them access into a system. Why would we do it? Because it significantly improves the security posture for that account. We also did a quick demonstration of blockchain.info and implementing multi-factor authentication using Google Authenticator. I've had a great time. I appreciate you joining me. I hope this information has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.